Hey, this is Passy from Passy's World of ICT, the guy with the white hat. And today we're here with the Bob's Burgers application part two, uh, where we're going to be able to take those orders that people have made for their food and drinks and save that to an external file, which is going to be a CSV format file. And once we've got orders in the file, then we can go back and we can search for previous orders that are saved in that file. And we're going to bring those previous orders up on a special kind of pop-up search results screen uh, where you can see what the previous order was for that person uh, on a particular date. So let's get started and let's get into it. Okay, so in the part one lesson, and you need to ob obviously done that lesson before you do this one. In the part one, we built this burger ordering system, okay? So I had this uh, nice little form here and people could, you know, pick and click what they wanted and add burgers, sides and drinks, and then they added the order. And at that stage, it just gave, did some validation to check that they'd entered everything in here and items weren't missing. And then it just gave a message, this message box or order added successfully. But in this part two lesson, we're actually gonna add the functionality so that when they click on the add order up here, it's gonna save it to an external CSV file. And we're gonna do the uh, functionality. We've got that button set up there, order search, where we can search for old orders that have been saved. And so we're gonna do all the uh, processing for that. So it's gonna be a really long lesson. And remember, I kind of talk a bit slow at times. So you probably wanna get on that tools cog on the video and up the speed to like 1.5 or 1.75x just so it goes a lot faster and doesn't take so long. Also remember there's a, a video timeline index so you can always take breaks uh, and come back to it using that timeline index in the description for the video. All right now what we're going to do is so there's an order okay so Jimmy D he's ordered himself a burger some fries and a drink of water a water bottle drink and so that's going to get written to this output csv file so you can see all the things he ordered here inside the data grid view that are being displayed they've all been written out as comma separated values here uh, in this csv file and that's looking at it in windows notepad and this is when you load just double click that or far open with and have a look at it in Excel where it looks uh, just like it did in the data table because Excel's put it into columns to make it a bit more friendly. All right, so that's kind of our saving it to an external order file. Now the external CSV file will look slightly different to this when we're finally finished with it, but this is the idea of it, that there's things on the form we need to grab them all off the form and get them into a CSV file so we can keep them permanently. And the part two uh, lesson, we're also gonna do this thing, uh, add that coding for the order search. So you'll be able to put in the name of someone and their phone number and the date they made an order. And this order search screen will pop up and it's gonna show the search results. So we can see that on the 10th of July, Annie ordered uh, just a pretty plain old cheeseburger there, some fries, onion rings, and a drink of Pepsi. And that came to $21.50 for the order total. So they're the two things we're gonna do. Seems simple as, but as you'll find out as we do it, uh, there's a few little tricks and traps which we have to get around. And it did take a, a bit of work to get this all together and get it going. All right, so version four program, because we've already done versions one, two, and three in uh, hamburger orders part one. So in version four, we're gonna write out that current data grid view uh, as we were showing you there to a CSV file of data. Uh, then we're gonna deal with the problem that in the last row of the data grid view, uh, there's a blank line and that kind of causes a problem. So we're gonna get around that and work out how to fix that. We'll be writing CSV files. So the idea is that you make these actually just as one big long string of text with VB carriage return line feeds in it. And then you just put it out to the file all in one go. So we've seen that previously in our text files, reading and writing lessons that you just kind of read a whole file in all at once and then do some updates and then you just write the whole thing out again, appending on to what was there previously. All right, so on that, CSV file, the one we looked at, we said we were going to be making some changes and the changes will be we'll also add the order name, phone date and dollar total onto each of those output records and we need those values for when we're going to be able to search for our items later on. Okay, so we're going to get this uh, output file all set up and all sorted and being written out in CSV file. Then we'll create that separate pop-up form we showed you so that you can put in someone's name, phone number and the date that they were uh, buying some food and ordering and it'll bring up 
from the orders file a match matching their name uh, phone number and the order date and bring up all those items which they actually ordered and what the price of the total order was all right so that's all going to go into a found records data table and then there's a little tricky bit because we want to put just the order items that they ordered into a data grid view on those search results so it kind of looks the same as when you were doing the original order uh, and that means we have to have two data tables and we've got to just selectively copy some of the data from one into the other and that Turns out to be a little tricky, but as you'll see in our solution, once we show you how to do it, it's easy, but it wasn't easy kind of figuring out how to do that and get it to work exactly right. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's start on this um, part where we're gonna save the order, which the person has done and they've clicked add order. There, we're gonna save that to an output CSV file. So if you double click on that add order button, uh, from part one, it had this code that if all the inputs were valid, so if they'd entered a name, a phone number, all of that, we we're just going to set that the order was added to true and we're going to give them a little message box order added successfully. Okay, now we're actually going to do the saving that order to an output CSV file. So that's all going to be in a separate subroutine. So here we're just putting the name of that new subroutine, save order to CSV file. So that needs to get inserted into the previous code. So you obviously need to have completed the Burgers part one lesson and have that form one screen where they can do an order and have all that program code done before you do this lesson or you might be watching this video just to learn how to save something from a data grid view into a CSV file and you might be sort of applying what we're showing you here to your project so that's okay too that's all good uh, now we're going to be working on this save order to CSV file this new subroutine so we're adding in all of this code here but in this first version we're just going to uh not bother getting everything out of the uh, files that we're looking up into the data grid view. We're just going to try write the uh, headers, the header records, the column headers, uh, that C, B, G, B, T, S, C, H for cheese, E, G for egg, all of those things. We'll just see if we can write those out. So we're just going to see if we can set up an output CSV file and just write some records to it. All right. And then we'll sort of go from there. All right, so we're going to get this code working, then we're going to modify it and add on to it. So it's quite a bit of work to do here. It's not just going to be sort of a little five minute job. So when we test that save code that we've done so far, it's working okay. So we had this order here, Jimmy D has put in his phone and his date and, or it's been put in for him. And then he's ordered a, a beef burger with some cheese and tomato sauce there, ketchup if you're American. Uh, and he's also got some egg on it, fried egg, nice. Uh, and some fries and just a lemon drink, a DL here. So that's all come to $17.50 for a total. So we're trying to write this data here of what he ordered out into the CSV file. So what we've done here is all of the 16 column headers. So in here there's 16 headers, C, B, G, B, T, S, O, N, C, H, L, E. Uh, L is for lettuce, TOs, tomato, MUs, mustard. All these things, there's uh, 16 of them, and they've all been written out. If you look at the output file in Excel or look at orders.csv in Notepad where we can see the actual comma separation, uh, that's all worked okay. So we know that we can take from this form data and we can get all that data and put it into an output CSV file separated by commas. So that's really good. That's really good that that's working. But we don't actually want those column headings. What we wanted to uh, save was the GBTSCH. Um, dashes mean that he didn't order these items. You know, the FR and the DL have these one, two, three lines of data here saved into our output CSV file. So we're going to make some changes now to do that. So looking at what we had, uh, just take out that column stuff and we're going to say here is for each row that's in the data grid view row on that form uh, we're going to go to each of the cells in there and just get what's in the cell and keep adding it to this uh, long string that we're making for our output file but each time we add one we're also going to add a comma on here to uh, have that comma separating happening so we're just sort of going through the whole data grid view grabbing everything and separating it by commas and just putting it into one big long string record but what we do is uh, after we've done one particular row and grabbed all the columns like for that uh, beef burger that we had on the top line of the data grid view we're just going to make sure on the last item there 
that we don't have the comma. So we're going to trim that off the end, take the comma off, and we're going to add a carriage return line feed, okay, before we do the next row, because we want the burger to come out on one row, his fries to come out on another row, and the drink to come out on the third row, all right? So that's kind of the looping code, uh, which is going to go through and do that. Okay, and then we need to actually write this out to the order CSV file. So we're using try, catch, and end try here, just uh, your standard practice when you're outputting to a file. So if all goes well, uh, there should be this orders.csv file and our whole big long string that we formatted there, which is actually multiple lines of carriage return, should get written out to it. Otherwise, if something goes wrong, we'll have this message box um, pop up. Now, if you want to make that message box pop up, what we found was that if you have your, if you've already ran this file, once and you've got the orders.csv file open looking at it in Excel. Excel puts a file lock on it so no other applications can use in case you were modifying it in Excel and wanted to save it. So um, yeah, if you've actually got it open up in Excel and you try to do another run, it won't let you, you'll get this message here. So you can check if that uh, exception path is working by doing that. But we need to uh, now test this process and see if it was writing out those rows of data for the food and drink items which were ordered. Okay, so we're going to start by testing just one order. So we've got Jimmy D's order. We've got it here. We've uh, picked and clicked and got it all in. He's getting his cheeseburger, his fries, and his drink of water. And we click the add order. It says it was added successfully. But now it has also been written to the CSV file. So if we look at that CSV file in Excel, we can see, yep, there is his... Uh, his chicken burger, actually, sorry, he's ordered a chicken burger with lettuce and mayonnaise. Uh, so we've got all that, we've got his fries and his drink of water. And however, though, uh, when we have a bit of a closer look at Notepad, Windows Notepad, and open up the file and look at it, uh, when you arrow down, the cursor seems to finish here with a blank line. So it kind of looks like it's writing everything out, but it's also putting a blank line down the bottom, which is going to be a problem if that is happening. We don't see it in Excel, but you do see it in Windows Notepad. So this is why you have to test and check everything really thoroughly, because you might be thinking, oh, well, it's much easier to look at it in Excel. So I'm just going to uh, check out my text resu test results in Excel. And yeah, they look fantastic. It's all good because you can't see the blank line in Excel, but if you opened up in notepad to see that hey it does have the commas and notice these last lines do not have a comma because we end trimmed um, the comma off but yeah hey hang on there's a bit of a blank line here so we'll check this out with some further testing so we're going to add an order for Annie now Annie's having a beef burger a cheeseburger uh, here and she's getting some fries onion rings and a Pepsi a drink of Pepsi here all right so that's her order and the order gets appended to the CSV file, okay, because there's Jimmy's chicken burger, his lettuce and mayo. Here's her beef burger with the cheese and tomato and fries, onion rings and the Pepsi. But notice in between here, however, and there's always a however, uh, we've got blank lines here. We've actually got blank lines if you check this out, especially in the Notepad um, app and open up your output order file. And why they're happening is because at the end of a data grid view, you always have this blank line here with an asterisk in case you wanted to type in another brand new record. Okay, so that line is getting written out as well. So it's writing out the person's order, but it's also grabbing this blank line and putting it into our output file. And that's just, um, doesn't need to go in the output file. We don't want blank lines in there uh, making a nuisance in the output file. So we need to fix that problem basically. Now the blank line problem is fixed by using this code here. So there's a problem. So we're going to find out what is the index value of that last row. So if we look at our data grid view and count how many rows are there and take off one because remember VB starts numbering at zero, one, two, three instead of numbering one, two, three, four. So on these loops, you always have a minus one on the end. But that very last row that's blank will be the count of how many rows are in that grid minus one. That will be the index number that VB uses for it. So we want to make sure when we hit that row that we don't actually write that row out. So what we're doing now is that we're saying uh, if we're up to the last row, so inside our four each and just between where we're going to go through all the columns and the cells and get the values, we just need to do a quick little check. If the current um, row index is that last row, then 
we just want to exit this for loop. Okay, that was just some debug messages we had when we were testing this. We want to exit the for loop. Now how we count the current row index is, look, there's probably some way to get VB to tell us what index number it's on, but we did some Googling and a quick look at Stack Overflow and we couldn't find it. So we thought, look, the easiest way would be to just make our own counter. So we've set the current row as zero because we know that first row VB does, it calls row zero. And then each time we finish doing a row and adding it on to our big long string it's going to be output to the file, uh, we're just going to up that count by one. So when we come through the second time, we know we're on row one, then we're on row two, row three. When we get to this one that's the last one, we just exit the four. So we don't bother grabbing any column values or anything and putting them out uh, into this big long string that's going to end up in the output file. And this is good because this is generic way of doing it. So this would work in any languages and we don't have to rely on using some special thing in VB that actually just tells us what index it's on. We can just count them, the rows ourselves as we're going through them and do it with build it with our bare hands, which is, you know, the best way of doing programming. So we're going to test this fix. So we'll just delete that order CSV file we've got out there at the moment because it's got problems. It's no good. It's got all those blank um, lines in it and we'll try again. So what we do is we get on to Jimmy B. I think he changes his name from Jimmy B to Jimmy D. But anyway, we'll get on to Jimmy B here and that's his phone number. It's the 10th of July. He's getting his chicken burger with lettuce and mayo. So we do all that. Click the add button, add it. And when we have a look, uh, then we just go on to the next person. So we clear this form off and we go on to Annie. So we put in Annie and her phone number and her date and she's getting a cheeseburger and we add that order in. Okay, and then we just add one more order. So we wanted to have kind of a start, a middle and an end order in our output file. So we just came up with Jenny here. Jenny doesn't want much. She doesn't have much money. She just wants a, a Pepsi and some fries. Okay, which is going to be $8.50. So she does her order and we add it. So those three people's are uh, orders should now be in the output CSV file. Now when we check the output CSV file, here they are. Here is um, Jimmy's with his chicken burger with lettuce and mayo. Here is Annie with her burger with tomato sauce and cheese. And down the bottom here we've got this uh, drink of Pepsi and some fries. That was Jenny down the bottom. All right. And we don't have any blank line spaces in between each person. So that is really good. So when we look at it in Excel, uh, and we've just drawn these highlighters here ourselves to highlight it, we can see, yep, that's Jimmy B with his uh, chicken burger, lettuce and mayo. This one's Annie. And that bottom one with just two rows here with the Pepsi and the fries, that's Jenny. And there's no blank rows there. So we fixed that problem and that is really good. So so we're getting all of our, excuse me, items from the data grid view written out. We're not taking the headings, the C, B, G, B, T, S, O, N, C, H headings. We're not taking them and putting them into our file, but we did show you the code there if you wanted to do that. So if you were just planning on, you just wanted to dump out what was in the data grid view to a CSV file and save it. Uh, this has probably shown you enough about doing that. And you could include the headings up the top as well if you wanted to. But let's continue with what we're doing. So on that CSV file, it's all going really well. The only thing is we've got those orders and here we've just put the colors around them so we know who's who's. But without those colors, this could just be one big order for one person. Like maybe they're getting a cheeseburger, uh, sorry, a chicken burger, a cheeseburger here and sort of some extra fries on the end. That could just be one order. It could be two orders. It could be four orders. We don't know. Uh, we don't know which of these orders belongs to which customer and how much stuff they ordered. So yeah, that dump of what was in the data grid is a good start, but it's not everything we need to have in our output file. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add all this coding and processing so that We've got the customer's name and their phone number, although Excel won't show the zero in front, but it is there when you look at it in Notepad, so don't be alarmed. And we've got the date of their order and we've got all the items they ordered here. So what we want to do is we want to just have this information about what they ordered, but on the front of each record, we want to actually know who it was, what their phone number is. Um, now the phone number gives unique identification. So if there's another Jimmy D, uh, we're not expecting him to have the exact same phone number if it's a different person, okay? And there could be lots of people that come in to get burgers called Annie, uh, but this Annie has this particular phone number, all right? And we wouldn't be expecting another different Annie to have the same phone number. So this phone number we're kind of using as our unique identifier along with the date because someone with the 
the same name and phone number obviously might come to Bob's Burgers many times and we're hoping that happens if we're Bob okay so yeah we need to put that in front then we'll know whose orders is whose uh, so that's what we need to do next so we're going to add the name phone number and date to every CSV file line and that's fairly easily done actually so just go into the save order CSV file subroutine which we've been working on and at the very start of each row so when we're in here and we're setting up our big long string to put all of our output in at the very start of each row uh, we're just going to have that we're going to get off the form off form one we're going to get their order name out of that text box the phone number out of that text box and out of the date time picker we just have to do a bit of reformatting here we're just going to pull the date out in day month year year australian british format and we're going to put that in string name string phone and string date all right so we're just getting all these things here for the current order we're going to be writing out items for and just storing them in str phone some nice short little variables that we can reference down in the loop so add that coding into the save order csv file in that exact location where we're showing you there and then we continue and what we do is that when we're in that for each row um, loop here going through all the rows in the data grid view and getting all those items that they ordered uh, we just need to make sure that before we actually go and get uh, things out of the data grid up the front here in the start of the record just put the uh, join on the name of the person and a comma the, their phone number and a comma and the order date and a comma okay so that will put those things up the front of the file so that's all good so add that code in to the existing subroutine in exactly that location and saying exactly what it is there and then we also need to uh after we've put that name phone number we also need uh, the total order cost in the file as well because when we're going to be searching we're going to search up an old order but we're going to want to get its order cost as well now some people might be saying oh no i remember when i did a database course they said never store a total if you could recalculate it and true we could recalculate what the total is for the order items they have but remember prices change over time so this might be an order that is six months old and maybe six months ago a cheeseburger was 50 cents or a dollar cheaper than it is today so we actually need to store the real historical price so we just add that on as the last kind of item in our uh, comma separated values so we need to put that code in as well and delete our order csv file yet again from the bin debug folder and we're going to rerun those previous three test orders and see if it all works okay so jimmy b has changed to jimmy d uh, but i think we're going to stick with jimmy d now jimmy d with that phone number on the 10th he's getting his uh chicken burger his lettuce and mayo his fries and his drink of water and that's added and when we look at the order csv file in notepad we can see it has put his name his phone number and the date here on the front of the record and then you have each of his items and the order total on the end so we now have all the information we need to store about this order so that we can search for it and display it later on all right so that's all been good we've added those extra details each side of what we used to have at the front and at the end so that's all going great and when we try another one here we try annie's order out because remember she was having the cheeseburger fries onion rings and the pepsi and her order has been added in with her name phone number and date and the total price of the order $21.50 here is going on the end so that's all working great and then Jenny with her um, Pepsi and her fries she's here on the end okay uh, with her stuff in the order so her order details have been added to the front so we know this Pepsi and fries belongs to Aunt Jenny and we know that the total of her order was $8.50 so that is good that's pretty much I think our orders CSV file output working so we can now have people uh, people's orders happening at Bob's Burgers and we can save them permanently into this really compact kind of simple uh, CSV file so that is good that is a system achievement that is making our application a good one all right 
So there's just one more thing we need to do uh, because what could happen is uh, we have got a problem with our save orders process at the moment that they save it, it gets written to the file, but they could click that button again and save it again and again and again. And we don't want some order saved, you know, three or four times in our output file because when we're searching the file later on, uh, we're going to get all four of those things come up. So everything we multiply by four and it's all going to be a mess. So all we need to do is they click that add button to go off and do the saving and we need to disable that button. So we're just going to have BTN add order enabled. We're going to set that to false. Uh, once it's saved it to the CSV file, we're just going to set it to false. So after that success message comes up, they can't go, um, okay on that message it disappears and I think oh hang on did I add that order and they might add it again we can stop those accidents all right but how do we do the next order how do we turn the button back on well when they clear the form uh, with that clear button to get started on the next order we just re-enable that add order button so it comes back to life again all right so I just need to add this code in to prevent double saving of the order or triple saving or quadruple saving. So we tested that code and that all worked out well and that was all good. So now we have finally finished the CSV file part and it's up to searching the order CSV file. So we've already been going for 25 minutes and I'd say we're going to go for another 25 minutes or 30 minutes finishing this off. Uh, it probably is two lessons in one and maybe we should have split it in two, but we always do our videos in one hit. So what you can do is you can just start, pause the video, stop it now, and you've learned how to take something off a data grid view and some other fields on a form and save all that into an output CSV file. And you can just be finish that and stop and then come back to the video because remember in the timeline index we'll have in the timeline there where we're just starting this bit searching the order csv file so we'll be able to come back to this exact spot and do this sort of part two lesson so we got a part two burgers and we kind of got a part one lesson and a part two lesson in it okay maybe this should be bob's burgers parts two and three but anyway we're on to the last part here searching that order csv file Okay, so we're now ready to start this and that's gonna be uh, for that search button we've got. We're going to be able to go to the saved orders CSV file, find the people's stuff for their name, phone number and a date where they bought something. We're gonna put it all in a pop-up screen and show the answers, all right? So we need to first make the form for that pop-up screen that's gonna show the search results. So uh, we've done this before in other lessons, but if you've forgotten what to do, you need to go to project and add Windows form is the first thing. And that will open up this box and make sure it's on Windows form, common forms, that's what we need, common items, Windows form. We're going to call it search results.vb. So make sure it is called search results.vb because all the code we're going to be doing is referring to that. And then we just click add and that will give us a totally blank form, but we'll need to sort of uh, format and design and style this form. So we just had a very boring blank form, but we've put our Bob's Burgers uh, picture back in here with the writing, which we made in cool text, which we explained in part one of the lesson. We've made a label here, which has a background color uh, on it. So it stands out a bit. And what are these other things? So that box there is LBL name because we don't want people to edit and change the name. This name is going to come off the other form uh, where they entered things. And this is just the results form that just only displays things. That's going to be the phone number. And that's going to be the date of the order. Uh, in here, down the bottom, we've got the text box where they can put the uh, total in, the total dollars. Maybe that should have been a label actually, but anyway, we've made it a text box. And this is a data grid view. And what we did, because we wanted to get these same color schemes we had um, on the original form, I think we just went to form one and clicked on that and did a control C, control V into here and just renamed this one to be DG view results. All right, so this is a data grid view that we're calling results and that's going on this search results form. Uh, we've got a button there to close this off once we've finished looking at the search results. Uh, that form is named searchresults.vb. That's what we saved it as. We've just set the web color to black and we've got a picture box there with a stock image we purchased from 123RF. But you can just find any image on Google that you want to use. So maybe you don't want to have an image uh, on the form. That's quite okay. We're just kind of a visual person because we do photography and we always like to have pictures and things on there. So yeah, that's pretty much the form all set up. That's going to be the new results form. And also the other good thing about this form is we're going to put all of the search coding and the display coding into this form. So that kind of breaks up the code a bit. We've already got 
a giant amount of code in form one to uh, take the order and save it to the CSV file, we can sort of compartmentalize the, the code and make it easier to develop our application by putting all the code that's gonna actually do this onto this form instead. So it's independent. All right, so we're gonna build this in stages. It'll take a while. So first, just double click the BTN order search on form one, and then add the following code where we need to do some things. So when you double click that BTN order search, it already has some code from part one in here, but what we're gonna do is that if all the Boolean uh, inputs are valid, then we're gonna uh, have search results show up the form, okay? So if everything they've typed in, if they've typed in a name, a phone, and a date, okay, we're gonna show up the form. Now this subroutine here validates search inputs. We can't exactly use the previous one. So in form one, we had this validation subroutine. How come we can't use the exact same thing in this search form? Well, in the search form, we only want the name, phone, and date. We don't actually want order items. So we're just gonna to have to do a lot of copying and pasting to create this validation uh, we need because there's no use going and uh, bringing up the search results form and trying to look for results if we haven't got the name, phone number and the date entered, all right? So we're gonna do that validation first. All right, now we're only showing the start and finish of that validation subroutine here because we basically just copied and pasted everything out of form one and put it into the search results forms validation routine, all right? so. We're just gonna check uh, that the name on form one here hasn't been left blank. So this code here is going into form one dot VB. So we're having a new subroutine validate search inputs. Um, so yeah, if the name's not blank, all that stuff down to once we've checked the name's not blank, the phone not blank, the phone's the correct 10 digit length for Australia, it starts with a zero and it's all made out of numbers then all the inputs are valid, okay? So this code, now let me just get this right because this is where you can get mixed up. Uh, this is on form one. So on form one, when we're doing order search, okay? This validates search inputs. This is going into form one's existing program code, all right? So just make sure you put it in the right place. So we're gonna copy and paste everything we had from the other validation subroutine, which is already in form one for the part one of Bob's Burgess lessons, but we don't need this bit. So don't include copy and pasting this. Do not copy and paste and put it into this validate search input subroutine, okay? Because we don't need stuff ordered. We just need a name, a phone number and a date. Okay, we don't need any order items, so it, don't put that bit in there uh, when you're copying and pasting. Now, when we test it so far, we'll just see how it's going. Uh, as long as we put in a name, a proper phone number, 10 digits starting with zero, and a, pick a date, um, it will bring up the search results form. And we tested this, we're not showing it here, but we tested this with leaving the name out, and it just gives the error message, and you don't see this form pop up. If you put uh, have a number here which doesn't have a zero in front and it's not 10 long. It'll give you these error messages and it will not show you the search results form. So it just stays stuck here and you can keep clicking order search as long as you like, but it's not gonna actually bring up this form until you have all three of these things correct, okay? So that's what's happening there. All right, now we need to bring across um, three uh, the search criteria items, that name, phone, and date, which we entered on form one before we clicked the search button. We need to bring them across and show them on the search results form. So how we're gonna do that is use across form full name referencing. And this has been covered in a previous lesson, which we did and should be familiar to you. So the name which we've got on this search results form, so in the search results form, we're just double clicking anywhere on the form to go into the search results load subroutine. And we're gonna bring across the name. So the LBL name name.txt which is on search results is just going to get set equal to what was on form one in that text order name text and the phone number on the search results form is just going to be set to whatever was on form one in the text box for the phone and this last thing here we're just going to have to do a bit of reformatting of the date so we're grabbing the form one date time picker date and we're just putting it into a string so it's day day month month uh year 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 australian british British type format, and that's gonna go onto our form. So we can test all that out. And what happens is we had Annie and this phone number and this date, and we clicked order search. 
the other form opened up, see it's the search results form here, and it has brought it across okay. We've got Annie, we've got the phone number brought across, and we've got the date brought across onto this form. So they've all come across onto the form, and that is all good, and that part is finished, so we're done with that. Now in the search form program that we've just started building, we need to set up a data table that we're going to place the found records into. So we're going to be going out and reading that CSV orders file, looking for Annie with her particular phone number and her particular date. And we're going to find all those matching records in the CSV file, but then we need to set up a data table that we're just going to put them all into so that they're in program memory and then we can do some work on them. So we're going to call this found Rex data table. So we're just mentioning a new data table, which we've done in plenty of other programs and that's added to the top of the program. Now in the form load subroutine, not up the top of the program, that's where you specify all the columns and the setup for a data table you're making. So we just got with found rex data table. So it's for this data table. These are all the columns we're adding in and this is what we're calling them, okay? And that's just exactly the same as what they are in the input file, all right? And they're all just system string type and an end with. So that's all happening and we've got our data table set up. Now the next thing we need to do is actually read that orders CSV file. So how you do that is uh, we need to dimension here. Uh, before we do that, make sure you've got import system IO there because we're going to be using stream reader to read this line by line. And if you don't have that import system IO right up the top above public class, uh, yeah, nothing will work with a lot of the code we're going to be adding in. So we're just going to dimension that we've got this order CSV file. It's called orders.csv. It's in the bin debug folder of this project because it's just still sitting in there from when we did part one of the project. And we're going to set up the input file that it's processed by stream reader line by line. So we need to set up this standard kind of stream reader uh, stuff here. And we're not gonna explain all of that because we've already done that in other lessons. And if you don't know anything about stream reader, uh, go back to our read and write text files and learn about that if it's confusing you. And at the bottom of that form load subroutine, we're just now gonna call another new subroutine. So where we've got our form load subroutine, it did have this stuff here to define all of our columns for our data table in the end width. We're going to have this subroutine called read orders file for match. So we're going to read the orders file and try and find Annie's record that match her phone number and the date we're looking for. Uh, so in this first thing for read orders file match, we need to check is the file there. So if the order CSV file isn't there in bin debug, that's a problem. So we just need to exit out and give a message that we haven't found it. But provided everything's okay and we haven't exited the sub, we'll now open that file so we can read it using stream reader. So that's the standard kind of setup to do that. And we're gonna read through the input file. We're gonna count how many matching records are in the file. Okay, and at the very end of the file, VB detects uh, that we're finished reading the file. So we're gonna do try until the end of the file. Uh, we're going to read in a line and then we have this record line columns uh, array. So what that does is every um, item we've got, it takes it and adds it to the array, but it splits off and doesn't use the comma. Okay, so at the moment, we're just gonna try and um, look and load every record that's in that orders file. We won't worry about the criteria. So we're not actually going to look for Annie and her phone number and her specific records. We're just going to take all the records from there to see that we can read them and get them into this data table. Okay. So we're breaking it up into kind of simpler steps, just building it up bit at a time, bit at a time, same way the Egyptians built the pyramids and the Romans built Rome uh, and all those big things that take time and are really great when you've got them finished, just like this application is going to be. This is really cool because you're building like something like a real application here. So it's good fun. So, that's the code there and we've got adding a new row here and we're doing our record count okay and we've also got a couple of debug displays here so we're going to count how many records we actually read from that file and put that out in a message box and then on that data table that we're adding up you can do found rex data table do dot rows dot count it'll count how many rows it's put into the data table and the number of rows that went into the data table should be the total number of records we read from the file 
then we know that everything's working a okay. So that's what we need to test. So I've got this input file here where we were doing some testing previously. We added Jimmy D's order, Annie's stuff, and Jenny's, uh, her Pepsi and her fries. So we've got that code that's got nine records in that CSV file. So we're expecting this new code we've just added in to read nine records and give us a message box telling us that and to load those nine records all into that data table we've set up. So when we run the program, the debug messages look like um, they're telling us that everything is going okay. So the number of records it read, it counted to nine okay, because there were nine in that file. And when we check the um, row count of that data table, that comes out as nine as well. So it looks like all nine of the records were loaded into the data table okay. So this searching routine is going really good so far. Now we need to just add the search criteria. So all we're gonna do now is instead of adding all the records, we'll have an if condition, and we're only gonna add records to the data table if the if and condition is true. So if we hit a record and that first item in it, in the first column there, uh, is equal to uh, the name, which is on our form in that label, and the next item along there, which is the phone number, if that equals the phone number we've got on our form, and if the third item, which is the date, equals the date which we've got on our form at the moment, well then this record matches the search criteria that we've got. So this is Annie, it is her phone number, and it is the 10th of July, so we wanna grab that record. So it'll do all this stuff here and grab the name, phone, date, all of the items she ordered, and the total dollars, and put that into a row in our data table, okay? And we're just keeping a count here of how many records we read in still, and we're putting it all in try catch, and we've got an error here if that happens while it's counting the total record. So we put it in uh, the standard try catch um, processing as well, and make sure that end if you put in is just above that loop statement, okay? So it's very critical where that end if is located and make sure you get it in the right place or things won't work. Okay, so now we need to test if this record matching criteria is working. So we won't just get nine records, the whole file now, we should just get a specific subset of records depending on what our criteria were. So we're gonna use our good old friend Annie who's ordered a beef cheeseburger here with some tomato sauce or ketchup if you're in America, uh, some fries, onion rings, and a Pepsi. So she's got four items there. So if we're looking for Annie, we should find these four items, okay? So what we've done is on Bob's Burgers Form 1, we had Annie in there, we had that phone number, the 041.888, and we had the same date, the 10th of July in here, and we've clicked order search, okay? And our debug displays are telling us that the input records that they found matched that criteria, those three things was four of them, and that's looking good, because there are four of them in the input file. And even better than that, it's telling us that it put all four records of, into the data table. Okay, so this looks like it's working great, even though we can't actually see the records physically yet on the form, we're getting onto that. Um, it looks like it's finding them and it's putting them into the data table. And so that's good. Now, data tables are great. Once you've got something in a data table, as you've probably seen from our previous lessons, then you can do anything with it. They are so fantastic and so good. And another great reason for using VBNet for learning programming. Now, there is a situation, what about if we put someone's name and phone number in or the wrong date where they didn't buy food on that day and we don't find matching records? We need to cater for that situation as well. So how we do that is that in that read orders file for match, uh, if the found records, okay, so if, the fa if there's no matching records found, so if the found recs data table, so if when we're loading up that data table at the end here, so we're putting this down the um, bottom of the subroutine, okay? Uh, yeah, if, we, if the record counts zero, that means no orders were found for that search criteria. So we need to put this message box, it's a multi-line message box. We've done this sort of thing before and in lessons that we've done, but basically it's gonna give that message and also tell the name, phone, and date what those criteria were and tell them to click OK to end the search uh, because no orders were found, all right? So that's gonna be right up front uh, in the subroutine and otherwise, they're gonna do the loop to load up the found order items data table. Okay, so that's splitting off the order items from the found records. So this is kind of right down the bottom of the subroutine. We're gonna look if they've 
zero records were found, I would just give the message. Otherwise, we're going to go to the next stage, which is we've got all the found records, but we want to pull out just the food that was ordered, the food and the drinks, so we can display that onto the form. Because we've already got the person's name, phone number and date on the form, so we don't need that stuff which we've retrieved and put into the data table. We only need this other stuff. But anyway, let's just test this out for no matching records. So I put in Jaden here, a new customer Jaden with that phone number and that date, and it's telling us no is found for search criteria Jaden with that name and phone number and date click OK to end the search so when you click OK the um, search results form won't open up this will just stay sitting here as it is and if you click order search again I'll just keep giving that message because in our file here of our orders we've only had those three test people we added in and Jaden our friend Jaden is not one of them okay so nothing should happen except this uh, message here and that's all working well. So we've catered for the fact that no records might be found in the order CSV file and our processing is handling all of that. So that's good. Step by step, we get closer and closer to the end. So sort of just steps up the Mount Everest there, stopping at some base camps, getting a drink of water and away we go. Now we want to, uh, pull out the found order items so we can display them in the data grid view on that search results form. So we need to work on displaying all of the order items that are in that found order. Okay, so first we're going to define a data table to put them in. So we already had the found records data table, which we've been reading our file with the criteria and loading that up beautifully. That's all working. And now we're going to have one called found items data table, another data table. All right. So it needs a separate definition up the top of the program here. And of course, down in the form load subroutine where we're defining all the columns for our found recs one, we now need to define all the columns for this second data table, the found items data table. And in these ones, we just want the columns of the food and drinks they've ordered, okay? We don't want the person's name, phone number or date, and we don't want the order total. We just want what did they actually order? Because then we can take this and put it on the data grid view on the results form, all right? So next we need to create this some sort of subroutine that's gonna go through the found records data table, that first one we made, and locate all of these food and drink order items and just pull them out and put them into this other one, the other data table, the second one, the found items data table. So we're kind of working out how can we select and copy across uh, different tables. So let's have a bit of a visual on this. So at the moment, we've got all of these records from the input file, these ones here, they're kind of in this found records thing. And we've got the name in column zero, one and two, the name, phone and date. Now, they're already displayed up the top right hand corner of the form. Because remember, we did that across form referencing and grabbed them from form one and put them there. So we can just bypass these. We can ignore these. They were just there for the matching and we don't need them now. We're trying to get these ones in here. And these ones in here are going to be in columns three to 18 of that data table we've loaded up with these found results, okay? So we don't want to do anything with columns zero, one and two in the found recs data table, but columns three to 18, that's the data we want to grab and pull out and put in this other data table which we've made, all right? And we also need to pull out this um, one copy of this total price here for the order and get that into the dollar total um, text box which is on the form okay to show what the uh, dollar total was for that record for that whole order that we've searched for and we're displaying now okay so just sort of that's what we need to do so try and keep that visualization in your mind while we're writing this code because you might get lost in the code and think it looks way too complicated but basically we've kind of got all these things here these big long slabs big long slabs of lines in the data table we've set up already so we've got this information this information this information we want to ignore that bit, the pink bit, grab this bit here, the blue bit, and use that in our data grid that's on our form. Grab this bit and use it in the text box that's on our form, all right? And that's all we're trying to do here. So let's get into it. So at the bottom of the form load subroutine, we're gonna add another call to another brand new subroutine. This one's gonna be called copy order items to found items, okay? So we're gonna have those order items which were in the results file and get them out into this separate brand new 
um, items data table. All right, now we had quite a bit of difficulty doing this, or you might have difficulty, and we've tried to write, I don't know, a little textbook right up here in the comments for the code. But we were thinking, okay, we've got that stuff for Annie, the blue stuff in the middle, sort of, of our existing foundrex table. Why can't we just grab each of those and just take the first one, put it over in the data items, take the next lot of blue stuff, put it over in data items. Just a simple uh, loop, an IJ loop that could just grab from the one we've got and put it in that brand new one we're making. But the trouble is the brand new one is completely empty. And you need to think of it like this, that they're two big cupboards. So we've got one big tall cupboard of all the found items and they're on different shelves in the in the cupboard but this new data table we've made where we just want to have the food and drink items out of those found records we don't want name phone and other stuff um that whole cupboard that we've got set up doesn't have shelves in it okay so you can't just kind of move something from the found rec straight over to the items because there's no shelves to store it on you have to make a new data table row to put it on kind of like putting a shelf in the cupboard to put something on so we tried to explain that all here and we tried a few different things out and they weren't working and there were different reasons why they weren't working and a data grid view once you link a data grid view on a form if you link it up to a data table that's in your program they're bound together and so you can't actually write program code you cannot write program code to go in and just change the um, data grid view because that would put it out of sync with the data table in memory. Uh, so yeah, we ran into uh, a few things and a few problems, but we eventually got it figured out. And people that are programmers looking at this would go, well, Percy, you fool. Why are you even doing it with flat files and CSV structures? You should be using a proper normalized database. So you should have this in MySQL or in Microsoft Access, set it up as tables. You should have a table for the customer details. The customer should have a number, which is a unique primary key identifier. The order should have a number, which is a unique primary key identifier. You should have another linking table in between them. And look, yeah, sure, that's the problem proper way of doing it uh, when you're building apps. But however, 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 and there's always a however, the thing is that's well beyond the scope of what we're doing here. This is just, we're still in kind of the beginners, even though it's starting to look complicated. We're still kind of beginner programmers here with the, where we've come to in our course. And we're not ready to do databases and linking tables and writing SQL to run queries to pull the data out of the data table. Um, it would look really good and work a lot better but that's way too complicated for us now look further down the track i want to make videos about how to set up things in databases and then link them to visual basic and do sql selection and all those things but at this stage of the beginners course we're not doing that we're just using these flat files and they do work and we can get an answer and let's move on and get that answer right now okay so what we need to do is we're trying to copy from that found record thing into this other one, all right? So what we do is we just use an I counter here to go down through all the rows that are in our found records, all right? And for the one that's called CB in our new item, our found items data table, the second one that we're copying to, for that particular column called CB on the row we're doing at the moment, so we're just making and adding a new row. We're putting a shelf in that cupboard first so that we can put some stuff on it. And the stuff we're putting on the shelf is in the CB. We just want to go to the Foundrex data table at row I and I we're starting off at zero. Just as the first row, grab item three. First row, grab item four. So we're just grabbing everything out of the Foundrex table, which already has things in it that we grabbed from the file. And we're putting them into this new item row. So that's how we pull out columns three to 18 for every row and just extract out the food and drink items and totally bypass the names and phones that are in columns zero, one, and two. All right, so you have to do it this way. You have to add a new row each time into that new data table you've made because it's like a big cupboard that doesn't have any shelves in it. So you've got to add shelves, you've got to add rows before you can put the stuff on the row, okay? So that's all that's happening there. It looks very complicated, but it's just a big copy and paste. And that all worked beautifully as we'll see in the testing. And 
Once we've got that found items data table loaded up with just the food and drink items, then to get it display on the form is so easy. It's just a nice little one liner. We just bind that data grid view of the results which you've got on our form, just bind it up to that data table so it'll display the things in that data table. So you use that by using dot data source. We just set the data source of the grid view that's on the form to tell it to go get everything out of that data table and display it, all right? So that's gonna be really good. And just one last little thing, we did need that total dollar cost of the order in that little text box underneath everything. And that's just done by pulling out row zero and column 19 of our first found record. And that's where that dollar total is. I mean, grab it and put it in that text box. So we're just gonna test now that this is working. So we're using our same three previous test cases. So those test cases have been added and saved to the file. They are orders that have been taken and orders that have been saved. And now we're gonna find them and display them. All right, so we know Jimmy D had this order. That's his phone number on the 10th. That's what he ordered and it all cost $15.50. So with that, all that processing code we've added, ho ho, it is working a treat. It pops up the search results form. Jimmy D's name and phone number and data are on there and they match up with these, okay? And look, we've pulled out his stuff. We've extracted the uh, chicken burger of lettuce and mayo, that's showing up as his first item. And then his fries are here and his drink of water, okay? And that order was costing $15.50 and that's displaying down in the total here. So that is all working beautifully. Test case one, we have been able to search for this order, which is in the order CSV file. We've found it and we've been able to display it um, in the same sort of format, which was on form one, which will be good because, you know, we don't want to surprise the user with some new kind of format or list to understand. We'll just do it in what they're used to from when they were taking orders. Now let's check out Annie. We're going to look for Annie. So we, on form one, we put her stuff in and click the search order. Let's open this up transferred it across, that's all good. It's found her items here. She was having the burger with the cheese and tomato sauce, some fries, onion rings, and Pepsi. And they're all displaying down here in this data grid view. So we've managed to find her records in the file, plonk, take everything that was there and put it in one data table, and then have some code which could look at everything that was in that one data table and just pull out these bits here of what the food items were and get them all listing in the data grid view. All right, and also 2150 and 2150 for the total. And let's go for the hat trick now, third time lucky again. So when we look at Jenny, Jenny was just getting that Pepsi and those fries and here it is it just shows her pepsi and her fries and that was costing eight dollars fifty and that is there so that is awesome we have written something which can search a csv file it can take the matching data out and put it into a data table and then we can even get a subset of what's in that data table put into another data table and that other data table we can then get displayed in a data grid view on the form so this is really good stuff and you'll be able to use this in a lot of your application programming not just this um, burgers app which we're building all right so there's a close button on that form and we just need to do the coding for that. Now, as well as closing the search results form off, we're just going to clear out what was on form one. So we're going to kind of reach across to form one with full name referencing and just wipe out the name, the phone and the date which they had on there when they started the search. Okay, so what will happen is that when we uh, click that close button, the results close off and you don't see them anymore. But when we come back to form one, see the date phone is, uh, the name and phone's cleared and we set the date to today's date. We're making this video on the 13th of uh, July, but it's not Friday the 13th, it's just a, uh, what is it? Saturday the 13th. So you're very lucky to be seeing this video and we're very lucky that it's all finished now and the code's working. All right, so we've just done those two things as well and that's got everything tidied up. And now they can either like put in some stuff and add an order, or they might wanna put in a different name and a different phone and do another order search, okay? We just cleared it out, got it all set up for them. Uh, don't leave the old stuff hanging around because they might be wondering, oh, was that an order I was supposed to be adding? Or is that the one I was searching for? Just clear it out, okay? They've done with their search, they got their results, they're finished, that's all good. Now we have some challenge tasks for you. So if you've been following our course, you've learned some really good skills now and can start considering yourself to be an application programmer. Now this Burgers app still needs quite a few things added to it to be a proper app. And if you're doing this for a software development project or something like this, 
you know, the more functions you can add in for your user, the better the app's going to be for them and maybe the higher the grade you can get for your uh, coursework as well. All right, so there is a still an issue and that's multiple orders on the same day. So we kind of haven't thought about that or looked at it in the work we've done so far, but someone could go to Bob's Burgers for lunch, be telling their friend about it um, that evening and decide, let's go to Bob's Burgers again because I want you to try their chicken burger. It's absolutely awesome. So they could do two orders in the one day. All right, so we need to add some uh, coding to cope with that. Now, it'll actually be okay because uh, the processing we've got, we'll just show the all of the items listed one after each other for both orders, all right, that they did. But the dollar total is going to be wrong because it's only going to pull the dollar total off that first order. And that's the problem you need to try and fix. And there'll be some interesting coding to do it, but definitely not beyond uh, the possibilities of what you know and have done so far in our course. So Annie here, you know how she got her cheeseburger well she was telling her friend about Bob's and they went there and she shouted her friend later on that day and they got chicken burgers this time and checked those out and had a drink each and each had some fries okay so there's two different orders here now what you need to do is fix it all up at the moment if you run the application as it is as of now it will show all of the items for both orders one after each other and there's a scroll bar here where you can go down and look at the rest of this because it doesn't all fit in this uh, data grid view panel but what will happen is the money will be wrong it'll show $21.50 now the real total is uh, for everything she bought on that day was $21.50 and $32 which is $50 three dollars fifty okay so you can see this one's been fixed up it is showing fifty three dollars fifty and it's also kind of giving a warning or a note there that the data displayed here is for more than one order okay so there might be a lot of stuff on there and someone might be looking at it going oh, i wonder if these search results are right that's a lot of food for one person to be ordering uh in one order well it might be for multiple orders maybe and he went back there three times that day and shouted her friends or her, her, where, the place where she worked. She'd recommended Bob's Burgers for lunch and she had the company credit card or something. So it could be massive in here. And we need to let him know uh, that there was more than one order involved. So anyway, that's a challenge task number one. And we've got a challenge task number two, uh, which is kind of challenge tasks two and three, actually. But have another button on form one and we're going to have another um, sort of search you can do that does another pop-up form but this is going to just be for all of the orders on one particular date so this is like management information system analysis system data analysis system for the owner of the business for bob so bob could run this function and it's going to show all the orders and you can just go through them because the data grid view will have a scroll bar anyway so it might be a bit kind of crammed up and and slow but you could go through the whole day and it would be very easy once you've got all those orders for one particular day just to do a row count to know okay how many items were there that we sold that day but then also uh, other things as well would be useful uh, for Bob to know and that's where part two comes in so some statistics some statistics on sales on that particular date and then Bob can compare you know what are the sales like on Tuesday compared to the Thursday or Friday and maybe because most restaurants close one day a week so with these statistics you work out what's the day that he sells the least items on and makes the least money and if he's going to close for a day that could be the day that they close and it's usually after a weekend like a monday and a tuesday that our restaurants are closed are one of those or both of those days so yeah we need the number of items sold from the row count that's easy but uh, we need to read through all those cells that you've loaded up in that data grid view for the day and try and count uh, how many chicken burgers there were, how many people had tomato sauce, how many people had cheese, all that sort of stuff. There's 16 of the 16 of those, I think, in the data grid view. Have those subtotals uh, of dollars and amount sold even. Uh, so Bob can get a really clear picture of, you know, like as sort of 80% of his stuff beef burgers and only 20% chicken or is it kind of 50-50? All these things can be worked out and looked at and uh, add immense business value to Bob. All right, so they are challenge tasks, but they won't involve new knowledge of VBNet. It'll just 
be you thinking about things and trying them out, building them up step by step like the Egyptians building the pyramid and uh, yeah, see how you go because you should be getting to the stage where you're an application programmer right now. Now I'm getting to the stage where I've gone for over one hour again. Remember there is a whole programming course on the passiworldofict.com website. So go there and click on the programming button. If you want to look at previous lessons, maybe you didn't quite understand stream reader and you want to know more about that. You can go back to the read and write files, text files lesson to find out about that and uh, all of those things. And yeah, that's it for this lesson. Now there might not be another lesson for uh, two weeks. So next weekend we might have to be doing something else. So there may not be a lesson, but there'll definitely be one within the next two weeks. And if you like this video, if it's useful for you, give it the big thumbs up on YouTube. So make sure you click that to give it a like. And also subscribe to our channel so that in one week or two weeks time when that next video comes out, you'll get an update in your feed and know, hey, there's a, another guy with the white hat video to look at. All right. So yeah, if you're liking this, thumbs up and subscribe and we'll see you in the next lesson.